video effects play a huge role in the projects that you create. They're what takes an amateur video and turns it into the work of a professional. You can use effects to correct color and brightness. However, they can also be used to add animation, produce overlays, and create green screen effects. In this lesson, we'll learn about the effects workspace, applying effects to clips, animating effects with keyframes, copying and pasting effects, creating effect presets, keying and compositing, and the garbage mat. When you want to edit effects, you go to the effects workspace, which is made up of the effects controls panel, the program monitor, and the effects panel. The effects panel may already be open for you, but if not, go to window effects. The effects panel is where you find all effects. The effect controls panel is where you will configure the effects. Finally, the program monitor is where you can preview the effects that you add. To add an effect to a clip, you drag the effect from the effects panel into the effect controls panel. Let's search for tint and add that. And then add posterize and add that one. You can also select a clip in the timeline, then double click on the effect in the effects panel. Once you've added an effect to a clip, you can go to the Effect Controls panel to customize it. By going to the Effect Controls panel, we can adjust the effect by changing the values and parameters. You can also toggle the effect on and off to see the impact of the effect on your clip. To toggle an effect off, click the FX icon that appears to the left of the effect name. When you do this, the effect is disabled. To turn the effect back on, click the FX icon again. The order that effects will appear on your clip is shown in the Effect Controls panel. To change the order of effects on the clip, drag an effect up or down in the Effect Controls panel. You'll see a horizontal bar to let you know where the effect will be placed when you release the mouse. Just remember that you can't drag standard effects above fixed effects. You also can't drag fixed effects below standard effects. We learned about some fixed effects in the last lesson. To remove an effect in the Effect Controls panel, select the effect. Next, either press the Backspace or Delete key on your keyboard. You can also right-click on an effect, then choose Clear. To remove an effect in the timeline, select the clip or clips, then right-click on the clip and select Remove Effects. You'll then see the Remove Effects dialog box. Check the effects that you want to remove. Note, intrinsic effects are fixed effects. Click OK to remove the effects. We worked with keyframes in the last lesson. Now we're going to use keyframes to animate effects that we've applied to clips in the timeline. To add motion to effects using keyframes, we're going to use the tint and posterize effects we added earlier. We want to move the playhead in the timeline to the start of the clip. Go to the Effect Controls panel. Make sure the triangle to the left of the effect is twirled down so we can see the configuration options. Then click the Toggle Animation button or Stopwatch next to Amount to Tint under Tint and Level under Posterize so that keyframes are enabled. Now let's change the setting for Posterize and change the Matte Black 2 color for Tint to an orangish brown. Now move the playhead to the second location so you can set the keyframe for the second effect. We want the effects to start to wear off, so we'll change the level of tint to about 63 and posterize to about 12. Now we'll move the playhead closer to the end of the clip and lower the effects down to nothing. Let's see what our clips look like now. That's a little slow. We can speed up the animation by choosing the keyframes and moving them closer together.
that's better. Needless to say, you can spend a good bit of time selecting the right effect for a clip, then perfecting it using keyframes. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a way to copy that effect in keyframes so you could apply it to other clips in your current and future projects? The good news is you can, by creating a preset that you drag onto a clip in the current project, or even a future one. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to copy the effect in keyframes from the last section when we added tint and posterize. First, I'm going to copy my clip and delete the effect so I have a raw clip. To copy the clip, I'll hold down the Option key and drag my clip. Now I'll delete the effect so we can start fresh. Click on the clip with the effects we want to copy. Next, we'll go to the Effect Controls panel and select the effect that we want to copy, then right-click and select Copy. Now go back to the timeline and select the clip you want to paste the effect to. Go to the Effect Controls panel. Right-click anywhere in the panel and then click Paste. As you can see, our keyframes copied over and everything. You can also create an effect preset so that the effect you created can be used in future projects. To do this, click the clip that contains the effects in the timeline. Go to the Effect Controls panel. Select the effects that you want in the preset, then right-click and select Save Preset. You'll then see the Save Preset dialog box. Type in a name for the preset, then choose a type. Scale will scale the keyframes proportionately over the length of the frame when you apply the preset. It deletes existing keyframes. Anchor to Endpoint applies original keyframes to the beginning of the clip. It does not adjust for any differences in duration with It does not adjust for any differences in duration as with scale. Anchor to Outpoint applies original keyframes to the end of the clip without adjusting for duration. Click OK to save the preset. You'll be able to find the preset in the Presets folder in the Effects panel. Compositing is defined as combining two images in a scene and making it appear as if they were shot together. Keying is also known as green screening or chroma keying. It involves replacing a color in an image with parts from a background image. Typically, the color green is replaced with a background image. Green screening is used for network news during weather forecasts. The Ultra Key effect in Premiere Pro makes keying really easy. However, here are some things you can do to make it even easier for you. 1. Use a camera that has a raster sensor. 2. Use a camera that doesn't interpolate to attain HD resolution. HDV cameras do this. Number 3. Use a camera with a high ISO starting value. Number 4. Use the camera with no gain. Number 5. When you record your footage, record in progressive instead of interlaced format. Number 6. Record at the highest bitrate. Number 7. Make sure the background is evenly lit. Number 8. If you're filming one subject, such as a person, use a tripod L bracket and mount the camera vertically for higher resolution and higher pixel density around the subject. For keying, you'll record your subject with a certain color background. It's usually green. You'll want to make sure the subject doesn't wear any green so parts of the wardrobe aren't cut out. Create a sequence using your green screen footage that you shot with your camera by dragging it to the New Item button in the Project panel. When you do this, you'll be able to see the footage in the Program Monitor. At this point, you can rename the sequence if you want, and even organize it in a bin. Next, go to the Effects tab. Find the Ultra Key effect by typing Ultra in the search box. Now drag the Ultra Key effect to the clip in the sequence. To key out a color, go to the Effect Controls tab. You'll see the Ultra Key effect. Hover your mouse over the eyedropper tool. The mouse pointer will then change to an eyedropper. Use the eyedropper pointer to select the background color in your clip showing in the program monitor. When you do this, the green background changes to black. You can see that some parts are gray, and that's okay, we're going to fix that. Go back over to the Effect Controls panel. Select Alpha Channel in the Output menu. Now your video clip is a black and white clip. Select a setting preset. We're selecting aggressive. You can try each preset to find one that works best for you. Next, click the triangle to the left of matte generation. You'll then see transparency, highlight, shadow, tolerance, and pedestal. 
These will adjust how the mat is interpreted. Repeat this step for mat cleanup, spill suppression, and color correction. Drag the sliders to the right to increase the effect of the adjustment or to the left to decrease the effect. Once you're finished with all the adjustments, select Composite from the Output menu. You'll then see the key in the Program Monitor. Now move the keyed clip to Track V2 if it's not already showing there. Now we can drag a background to V1. Your background should always be on a lower track. Right-click on the background and then select Scale to Frame Size. When that's finished, you can go to the Effects Control Panel, and under the Motion Controls, you can adjust the position, scale, and rotation of your video and your background until you have your desired result. You can remove unwanted edges around a green screen key by using a garbage mat. To use a garbage mat, go to the Effects Panel. The garbage mat effect is found in the same folder as the ultra key effect. Drag and drop one of the garbage mats onto the keyed footage. Next, go to the effect controls panel. Go to the garbage mat effect. We chose an 8 point garbage mat, so we see 8 handles appear around the footage. Grab a handle and bring them in, one handle at a time, until it's like you need it to be. When you're finished, click an empty space in the timeline.